excited for the 4500 build this video is going to be a banger that's right all that glass is installed and if you're wondering what's going to power this thing yeah you're looking at part of it only part of it and you might be wondering what is all this for well we're going to be starting on the wetland filter and of course you cannot filter a 4500 gallon aquarium without lots of plumbing and more plumbing and trust me there's a lot more out there being painted right now so as you can probably tell from the opener, this is the video where this breaks wide open. This goes from a construction project to an aquarium. We've installed the glass. We've done the silicone. We're starting on the plumbing. We're starting on the wetland filter. We've got the braces built. We're going to be installing the braces. And yeah, we're going to be filling it up with water. <laughs> and we're going to find out, does it hold water? And we'll, we'll answer the uh, one of the comments from the other week. Uh, from uh, Let's see here. Ray Ray Viper 2006, he says... Yo, no way that holds water in it. Gonna blow that glass out into your knees. You need rethink what you have doing. So, so my translation is I don't think Ray Ray thinks I did a very good job building the aquarium. So, uh, you know, we're gonna find out. I'm gonna fill that thing up full of water. I'm gonna stand right in front of that glass, right with my knees right in front of the glass. And we're gonna find out if, if indeed Ray Ray is right and that glass blows into my knees and I don't know what he's thinking, maybe I wash away down the road or whatever, but uh, we're going to find out, does it hold water? Do my knees survive the fill test? Let's go. Okay, it's still black, but the difference is this is the final coat of uh, black pond armor. We are all done. It is all pond armored up. We are super, super thick all the way around. Also, we've uh, pond armored the uh, top of the aquarium because everyone who has tops on their aquarium nose, you get condensation up there, quite a bit of moisture, so it makes sense to go ahead and just uh, get that painted. But yeah, we are done done on the, on the, uh, the pond armor, pond shield. Uh, so how, what do we end up with? Well, we ended up with uh, <clears throat> two coats of the dark blue on all the vertical surfaces and uh, three coats of the dark blue on the floor. And then we ended up with two coats of the black pond armor on all the vertical surfaces and uh, three coats on the floor. So yeah, that, the, the floor of the aquarium is on there thick. And you're asking, is that the following the directions? Is that required to do that much over top of the fiberglassing? No, not at all. <laughs> this is massively overkill. Um, it's 4,500 gallons. I don't want any water on the floor. Uh, I, I'm overkilling it by far. I mean, could you use half <laughs> half of those materials and get a, a proper build? Yeah, you could. But like I said, for for it's not a huge amount of more money in the scheme of things for something of this size that I want to last forever. So yes, I have absolutely overkilled it. But here's the exciting part. This is the last time you're going to see the tank like this because. The glass is here and it's time to start installing all these windows. So the next time you see this tank, we're going to have the glass windows installed. So we are moving quick uh, towards getting water in this tank and uh, getting to the really exciting part, the aquascaping and uh, getting the fish and everything in here. So we're going to install these glass panels. I'll show you that. We're going to do a water fill test, uh, start working on the plumbing and some of the infrastructure for the lighting up top. Yeah, it's going to start coming along real fast. So. I got four big glass panels to install. So we saw in a recent video where uh, I stocked up with the uh, shark and ray and grouper food, uh, but we also have uh, frozen food for the uh, community marine fish. And you see, we're getting kind of low here in the freezer. So it's important to, uh, so when you have a lot of fish and a lot of big tanks, it's important to pay attention to sales because uh, when they have a 15% off sale, it's time to stock up on more frozen food. <laughs> time to get this sorted and put in the freezer. Let's see, what do we have here? GE1 all-purpose silicone. Hmm. An electric caulking gun. That's new. Ah, the handy dandy suction cups. What could be going on here? That's right. It's glass installation time. This is a big one. Uh, there's the uh, four sheets of... Uh, half-inch tempered glass and uh, 
I guess it's a little bit of story time because uh, getting in here wasn't exactly how I planned. So while I did have help lined up uh, to get the glass in, I didn't know exactly when I would need that help because of just, you know, building the tank until I get to the point where it's ready to put the glass in. And unfortunately, uh, that didn't sync up with my help. Uh, he was out of town for a week and a half. Uh, so I didn't want to push the build back. So, uh, well, let me show you. So with the help of these suction cups, of which I had two of them, I was uh, able to get the glass one piece at a time out of the crate and stage it uh, on some padding in the back of my truck and then strap it down back and all the way around to the uh, fish basement annex and then using two suction cups and two different places actually like this and holding it up to myself one down low one up high I was able to pull off one piece of glass at a time bring it in and then stage it up on top of the tank here then get in and then bring it down uh, but I, <laughs> I gotta tell you it was possible to do because you can see the glass in there, but oh my gosh, <laughs> my body was giving me all kinds of signals like my lower back was like, what are you doing? <laughs> so uh, needless to say, after I got the glass in, I went ahead and uh, called it a day that day and uh, this is the next day and I'm going to start fresh on installing the glass because uh, after I finished that, <laughs> that, that glass is beastly. Trying to move it in, the weird angles, getting it up there sliding it up, uh, switching through the handles in your hand. I mean, it's not that it was uh, too heavy for me to pick up or carry, it's just the moving, it's heavy to move around and, and position and do all that stuff. Uh, little little parts of my body that I don't even think about were, were aching. <laughs> so little muscles and tendons I didn't know existed were, they were letting me know that I was pushing it. So at any rate, start fresh today and uh, yeah, it's time to start siliconing in four giant glass panels in the 33 foot long 4,500 gallon aquarium. Whew, just take a little break here. Uh, you see the right side, notice something, something different on the left side. We got two out of four panels installed and uh, yeah, you know the common theme with this aquarium, it's just so much more work for each section than uh, Pretty much close to anything I built in the 3,000 gallon, but I built the 3,000 gallon so long ago that I don't remember how much work it was. But uh, yeah, this is a beast. But man, we got two panels in. And if you're wondering, uh, first of all, am I overkilling the, the silicone like everything else? You bet I am. And if you're wondering how much does it take per window? Yep, one, uh, one 12 pack per window. So it is on there. And I, I don't even, this is not even with the ceiling bead. This is just the gasket to hold it in place. <laughs> I've used so much silicone that I think it would uh, it would hold water without the uh, ceiling bead. Of course, I would never do that, but that's, there's a lot in there. Uh, but yeah, I am sitting down because it is tiring <laughs> putting these things in. Oh, but one thing, uh, to all those people who said, hey, dummy, why don't you get an electric caulk gun like that guy over there? No, you guys were right. <laughs> it's a lot easier. <laughs> uh, I feel kind of dumb. I should have got it uh, before I built all those other tanks, but... Uh, now that it's so easy, you know, maybe I should build some more tanks. All right, let me recharge and uh, we got two more windows to go. So one thing I'm really happy to report is that uh, all of the Jack Dempsey's are doing awesome and finally putting on some size. They're always slow growers, but uh, I don't know, anyone who's kept a group of these electric blue Jack Dempsey's, they're always not the hardiest fish. So the larger you get them, uh, the fact that they're all doing well for such a large period of time consistently, no problems or anything, definitely feels good. I'm looking forward to these guys getting grown all the way up because uh, they are beautiful fish. And of course you can see the uh, Thin Bar Silver Dollars are doing awesome as well. And uh, yeah, the Riverbend Tank from day one, peaceful, tranquil, and uh, fish have been loving it. So uh, yeah, I would say that the, <clears throat> so I would say the first attempt at the wetland filter has been doing really, really good. And it gives me high hopes that the really big wetland filter that we're building in the 4500 gallon is going to do equally well. Ah, those fish are beautiful. Before I get into showing you guys all the, uh, the silicone work and the, the seams and the gaskets and everything, I want to talk about two pieces of equipment that were vital. So one is the uh, suction cups for the glass because... I have a friend who's going to help me, but uh, you know I didn't know when I was going to be installing the glass, so I couldn't give him a time frame. Uh, and when finally the time came, he was out of town, and I didn't want to push the build back. So uh, 
two of these guys, one holding it down low like this and then one up high so I could pull the glass to me, uh, was actually the way I was able to get the glass in here and uh, put it into place. So uh, yeah, definitely couldn't have done it without these guys. <laughs> the other one is, <coughs> people are going to laugh because they've been saying forever, get the, you know, the, the electric caulking gun. It makes a huge difference. Well, yes and yes. They're absolutely right. It made a humongous difference. And I'm going to show you because it wasn't that it made a humongous difference with saving my arm from feeling like it's going to fall off and my, you know, fingers and everything. It did do that too, but it actually had a difference, a material difference on the build quality. So what ends up happening is when I am squeezing it all out by hand, it's not as even, um, it's not as consistent. <clears throat> as I get tired, as I move along, it gets sloppier and sloppier. It, so using the electric caulk gun actually allowed me to do a better job than I would have done without it. So I have much better gaskets, much better seams. Uh, they're much cleaner, much more consistent, and uh, again, much easier, but huge difference. And again, I would use the electric caulk gun now really for any size, not because uh, I was worried about wearing out my hand, but just because it allows you to control the beads so well. It's just, uh, you just get better quality work by using uh, that tool. Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about. You see there along the top that gasket house that's just almost perfectly solid, just that little area there. As we come down the side, again, almost perfectly solid. And then if you look at the ceiling bead, what a nice, clean bead we get there. Again, massive bead, but so much cleaner than uh, <clears throat> any of the silicone work I've ever had before uh, on a build like this. Again, I'm sure it probably looks crazy if you're used to just a regular aquarium silicone work. It's way over the top, but uh, that is by design, and you can't see it. That's the difference uh, when you're looking at the tank, so uh, it's, it's okay to go crazy overkill but as you can see, just, uh, yeah, the electric caulk gun made a huge difference and uh, we are all sealed up. There's a, <laughs> that's where I had a little bit extra in the tube, so I just went crazy, but yeah. Okay, so now that the windows are fully siliconed in, they have the gasket, they have the ceiling bead, and they've been curing for seven days, it's ready for me to go ahead and install the top braces so we can get the water fill test going. So over here, I have a bunch of top braces ready to go, and uh, so I'm going to install those now with a uh, lag bolt. So what I'll do is I'll show you. I'll put those on top. I drill through, and I put two lag bolts on each side, two four and a, I think they're four inch or four and a half inch lag bolts. Uh, so they will be very, very strong, and they'll keep the tank extremely rigid. And uh, <clears throat> we'll talk about why I chose the, the design of the braces that I did because of... Uh, the dividers and everything, but we'll talk about that. And then uh, once the braces are in place, well, it's time to do the water fill, the water test. So we're gonna fill up both the wetland filter and the aquarium and uh, make sure we don't have any leaks and we don't have any glass blowing out into our knees or any, any craziness like that. And then of course, uh, while that's happening, I'll be working uh, on the plumbing and uh, some bracing for the lights up top and uh, some also some cross bracing within the tank, sort of within the tank, like in the tank, but not in the water, just above the water uh, for our river bank. And uh, so then we'll give the water time to water test and wham. And then after that, it's drain and we're full bore. Uh, assuming everything goes well, uh, it's drain and then we're full bore into uh, building out the wetland, building out the aquascape and uh, connecting up all the plumbing. So we're getting close. Let's go. And so before I get into uh, showing you the brace installation, I just want to show you one little trick with uh, silicone work. What you want to do is uh, you don't want to put tape on here and expect that, that when you peel the tape off, it's going to pull off a big giant bead of silicone like this. That doesn't work. And uh, what you want to do is you want to have all this extra silicone push out. You get a really good seam like we showed. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to let this just cure. Let it cure all the way. Don't, you know, it's been there seven days. I haven't done anything. And then what you want to do is you want to come back and all you do is a take a razor blade at a 45 degree angle and you just score along there and then this will just peel right up like this. It just peels right off and you can just pull it off like that and you'll end up with these guys. It's a lot easier and what little you have to clean up there you can clean up with a, a razor and acetone and everything but 
Uh, yeah, just don't do it when it's wet. It'll just smear around. It just makes a giant mess. Just let it cure and then go ahead and trim it off uh, and pull it off once it's fully cured. Okay, on to the braces. I know you're thinking right now, those look like doubled up two by fours. Tank this big. Why aren't you using two by sixes, two by eights, whatever? Well, the reason is, is normally I would use two by sixes and I would put them right across uh, these points, these vertical uh, pillars in between the glass windows. But obviously we have the dividers. So we, we have the ability to put dividers in this tank and I don't want to block that by putting a brace right over top of it. So what we're doing is we're doubling it up and doing two two by fours on either side of this area. And it's going to actually do two things. For one, it's even stronger than just one two by six across there because we're going to have two, 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 and then one all the way at the end for some of the plumbing to connect to. And it gives me more to bite into with my riverbank system. So more things to tie into with these braces spread out like this so that I can get that uh, riverbank system to be perfect, basically. It'll give me a lot of area for the plant baskets to go. It'll give me a lot of area to attach uh, wood root and all that good stuff, which you'll see when we get to the aquascape. But uh, it's going to be important to have uh, those cross braces and then underneath it, bracing that comes across, which I can then tie in with the back to give me areas to, uh, like I said, as fix, uh, affix um, aquascaping material to and plants. And so what's going to hold these in place is going to be these massive <laughs> lag bolts. <laughs> we are going to be putting in two of these big lag bolts on each, each side and then two on the other side. So we've got plenty of these guys and uh, once these are screwed in there, it is definitely not going anywhere. So first of all, I'm going to get my drill out. I'm going to get drilled down and uh, yeah, then we're time to crank these guys in. Okay, this is a big milestone. As you can see there, we have all the bracing in place that we need to be able to do the test fill in the aquarium. So we're gonna take a quick look. You can see we've got essentially four by four braces that are lag bolted in to the top. Uh, again, there's space, so for the dividers and just to keep it uh, equal, I space down there even where there's not a divider and we've got these big bad boys keeping these locked in. So, what does that mean? <laughs> that means we can test fill this bad boy. So if you've been wondering, is it gonna hold water? Is it gonna, is it gonna blow out and take out my knees and wash me down the street? Well, we're gonna find out right now. So what I'll do first is uh, I'll just go ahead and add the hose to the wetland filter area and uh, we'll let that fill up and cascade over and then uh, we'll just keep an eye on everything and uh, hopefully not see any water out here on the floor and all inside there. <clears throat> and then of course, we're gonna have to let the water test run for days and days and days uh, to make to be 100% sure. So in that meantime, what I'll be doing is working on uh, the wetland filter and the plumbing and the lights. So let's start with the wetland filter. So uh, right now we got a big empty box and what are we planning to create? So what we're going to do with the wetland filter is we're going to use these egg crates to create a standoff at the bottom of the wetland filter. So this is going to allow, we're going to be modifying <clears throat> the grating on this for plumbing, but what's going to happen is it's going to create a standoff from the bottom of the wetland filter and where the aggregate will start from here on up. So underneath here will be plumbing where we're going to be introducing water into the bottom of the wetland filter as well as plumbing we'll use to uh, suck mulm and, and uh, debris out of the filter every once in a while. And then what, then what goes on top of this, so once we have the entire bottom of the wetland filter covered uh, with these blocks, is that's when we start with the first level of our aggregate, which are these five to six inch uh, uh, riverstone rocks, and they'll be covering the whole bottom of the wetland filter, you know, up to, uh, let's say, let's say a one foot of this aggregate. And then we go to the next aggregate, which is a three quarter to one inch rock that's then going to be on top of that. And then lastly, we have our gravel uh, at its very top level. So what's going to happen is we're going to build up the entire bottom there with the aqua blocks and then a foot of the largest aggregate, a foot of the middle aggregate, and at least a foot of the 
of the uh, gravel aggregate. And it could be, you know, a little more, foot and a half, but at least a foot. Uh, and yeah, we're gonna fill up this entire container over here, this entire area, I should say, uh, with those levels of aggregate. We're gonna have plumbing going down, introducing the water from the aquarium at the bottom. It's gonna upflow through all that aggregate. Well, we'll have a couple of clean out areas for the inevitable buildup of uh, sediment and mulm and everything as a functioning filter will create, produce. Uh, but yeah, the water then will upflow all the way up through all that aggregate and then overflow into the river system here. So we have uh, quite a bit of work to do. So we have quite a bit of work to do with that. We have a lot of material that's going to go in there, a lot of blocks and uh, a lot of uh, aggregate, literally tons of aggregate. Uh, and the next thing is the plumbing. So we have 12,000 gallons of pumps that are going to be introducing water into the uh, wetland filter and we have another 12,000 gallons of internal water flow in the river system to keep all the physical solids moving along to the far end of the system where we are going to be starting off the uh, introduce this is where we're going to introduce the water to the wetland filter from so there'll be <clears throat> there'll be plumbing going down the wall there it'll be painted black to hopefully blend in and as everything works its way down this way, it gets sucked up into those pipes. And then we're gonna run the pipes along the back there. They'll be mounted up against the wall, which is why you can see over here that they're painted black. Uh, obviously there'll be some touch up, but to uh, make that look nice and blend in, plus it's gonna get covered up by the, uh, the river bank. So you shouldn't see it at all, but it needs to be somewhere. It can be accessible to me if need be. And uh, yeah, we're gonna bring that all the way back here and then down four channels down into the wetland filter. And then again, there'll be two clean outs over on this side uh, to make it easy for me to access, um, to, to pump out uh, any, to pump out the buildup down there. <clears throat> so the question is, I can locate the pumps on the back there and I can have them pull the water from down there or I can locate the pumps down here, right where they're pulling the water from and have them push the water down that way. Um, I need to do a little bit of research to see if it matters uh, either way. Um, or even in theory, I could even locate the pumps in the aquarium underwater, but uh, I prefer to have them up more serviceable uh, than down in the water because uh, I would have to be it's a tall tank, you know, it's four feet tall of water. So I'd have to be going in there to do anything. They're obviously gonna get clogged up and everything with debris if I do that, uh, cause there'd be a screen or something. So probably not gonna do that, but I do need to know whether I should be pushing the water or pulling the water from this side. And again, it may not even matter. Uh, and, you know, once the water's flowing, uh, it could just be, you know, we all know about head height, just how far, how high against gravity is the pump pushing the water? And then once it's moving down the pipe, you know, it's, there's no more gravitational force on it. And then of course it's going down and then releasing underneath there. So there's no pressure uh, because it, it's allowed to disperse freely uh, in that cavity in the wetland filter that we've created. So it may, may not be an issue, but it's one of those things, it's a big project. I'm gonna do a little bit of dive, you know, research on that and uh, see if I see any reason, rhyme or reason why it might be one way or the other. And then other than that, uh, they'll just be installed such that the pumps can be removed if they need to be serviced or if they fail, so they can be replaced and uh, such that they don't stick out and look ugly. Uh, so I wanna have them on the back part where they can be covered up by the uh, riverbank and everything. Uh, and then <clears throat> just a matter of whether they should be located kind of on that end or on this end closer to the wetland filter. So uh, I got plenty of time to think about that because uh, I think it's gonna take quite a while to fill this bad boy up, but uh, let's get the hose in there and see what happens. I'm sure to nobody's surprised, but uh, this is going to take quite a while to fill up. So what I'll do is I'll just check back. Uh, once the water gets up to the top of the wetland filter, we'll get some video of that first cascade over. Uh, of course, I'll be keeping an eye on everything down here. I got some extra lights out here so that uh, if there's any leaks, I can see it. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, it's just uh, kind of hurry up and wait because even with good water flow, this thing is massive. It's gonna take <laughs> quite a while. So as you can probably tell, just feeding the 600 gallon reef slope, checking out all the fish. Uh, like everyone always says, feeding is a good time to uh, inspect the fish. It's, it's enjoyable to watch them eat, but it's also a good time to 
check out and make sure everybody's healthy, no signs of anything going on. Everybody looking good. And man, I just can't wait to get these guys into the, uh, what's now Predator Bay. I mean, when that becomes the, the uh, 1800 gallon Lagoon Aquarium, that's gonna be amazing. Queen Angel's finally putting some size on, which is awesome to see. We know the French has been getting big, but uh, Queen was, uh, you know, kind of stayed small for a while, but now it's starting to look beautiful. And of course, everybody else is looking uh, thick and happy. The uh, Army of Tangs, Trigger, the Angels, the Clownfish, everybody. Everybody looking awesome. But yeah, it's going to be... It's gonna be a, a, a lot of work, but uh, when that when that 1800 gallon is redone as a lagoon aquarium with these guys, it's gonna be something else. All that rock work, all those, uh, the, the complexity of the scape in there is going to be awesome. Not to mention the huge assortment of fish that's gonna be living in there. I can't wait. All right, so you're gonna see this the same time I do. Uh, we are very close to going over the threshold over on this side. Uh, looks like this side of the wall is slightly higher than the other side, but uh, yeah, it is getting close. That is a big box of water. Uh, I know there's been a couple comments like, is this filter big enough for this system? It's a big filter. Uh, I think it's uh, maybe doesn't come across as big on camera as, as it is, but uh, it is a very large filter and uh, it's going to literally have tons of aggregate in it and, you know, 12,000 gallons per hour water flow. So. There's going to be a lot of filtration going on, for sure, um, as well as it is a wetland, so it'll be all planted up, so uh, it's it's going to be a very powerful filter. Uh, if you compare the scale of it versus the one on the 315, which is doing an amazing job on the 315, uh, this is larger, uh, slightly, you know, a little bit larger. So, And as I'm talking, it looks like <laughs> we are at the threshold there, just starting to come over the lip. Pretty much all the way across, actually pretty even, but slightly higher on this side. And you can literally see the water working its way <laughs> across the top. Looks like that's probably gonna be the spot right there, so that's the lowest spot, and boom! We are overflowing into the tank. Very cool. It's gonna be interesting to see how uh, how this waterfall compares with 12,000 gallons going over it uh, per hour. It's going to be pretty, pretty substantial, but all right. So, uh, <clears throat> so far so good on the wetland filter water test. It's been filling up for quite a while as you can imagine and uh, no signs of any water anywhere. And now we're on to uh, testing <laughs> this giant beast. Uh, so there you go. It is overflowing. Yeah, and uh, it's not going to look like much for quite a while, obviously, in here. So uh, I'll have to come back once it's, once, uh, I don't know, five hours has gone by and maybe it's a third or quarter of the way full. <laughs> we'll see. It takes forever, but very, very cool. So first stage complete. Water in the filter box. Time to test. Time to get the rest of this thing filled up. And obviously, uh, don't get me wrong, this is, uh, this kind of, a water fill test is not a, okay, it held water for an hour kind of deal, right? It's, it's got to sit full for days and days to make sure there's no problem. So, it's kind of a uh, hurry up and wait scenario, but it is a huge uh, move forward on the build. But it is a, a huge milestone to actually get water in this beast after all this time building it. We finally got water going in, the 4,500 gallon. So I was originally thinking to end this video with the uh, aquarium filled all the way up, but uh, I think we'll stop here and uh, we'll let the tank fill up and uh, we'll start off the next video with uh, how, how well it did. Uh, you know, hopefully successful fill test. And uh, yes, I will stand in front of the glass to make sure uh, if anything goes wrong, I take the full brunt of it. Um, but yeah, in all seriousness, we're going to let this beast fill up. We'll start the next video with the results of the fill test. And then, of course, it'll be time to drain it, assuming it goes successfully. Well, even if it's not successful, it'll have to be drained and fixed. So either way, we get the results of the fill test. The tank will get drained, and then we will start on the wetland filter, the plumbing, the lighting, and the aquascaping. <laughs> so this is the fun part. Uh, it's really starting to kick in now. We have water in the aquarium. After all this time, the 4,500 gallon has water in it. 
awesome milestone and uh, it's going to get pretty damn exciting from here on out. So uh, yeah, check back soon. Thanks for watching.